Welcome everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast uh, Weight Loss Secrets webinar. I'm going to teach you today some simple tools for metabolic health. Before we get started, we want to introduce our host to you today, which is Martin Vitella, the health coach at Life Enthusiast. All right. Hi, this is the voice of Martin Vitella, uh, currently the health coach and trainer and lecturer at Life Enthusiast, a business we started online in 2001. Back before then, I did all kinds of interesting things that got me here, much like many health coaches or people working in the alternative health field, I had an interesting journey. It usually starts with a health crisis. Mine was induced by mercury toxicity that I picked up in a dentist's office, in a dentist's chair, I should say. And uh, going from that, I had to educate myself about alternative health. It turns out that the chronic inflammatory degenerative diseases that I also suffered from are largely caused by the industrial toxins and other few things that we pick up along the way. So now, Life Enthusiast, website at life-enthusiast.com, is a business that helps people either reverse chronic degenerative disease or build peak performance. It turns out that the same techniques that help us to build health are applicable from either digging out from a hole or just reaching the top. Cool. Well, I'm Scott Patton, and I'm the co-host of the Life Enthusiast online TV and radio show, which uh, we come pretty much every week uh, around the world to 170-odd countries, and uh, sharing the different uh, uh, concepts, philosophies, and products that we have on the Life Enthusiast website. Uh, I've been on the show co-producing with Martin since 2005 or six or seven, somewhere in there, so over 10 years, and uh, it's, it's one of my loves because uh, as, as similar to Martin, I've had many people around me and myself with different uh, health issues, and usually um, the, the, the mainstream medical establishment cannot help us if it's not a total catastrophe emergency. They're very good at that but they have a tough time with just, you know, I got a little bit of an ache here or I've got a lot of aches um, and, and getting rid of them. So that's a little bit about me. I'm excited to be here. Uh, Martin, what regulates our body weight? There is the biggest secret. The diet industry, the weight loss industry, the, uh, the TV programs, they mostly try to sell you on the idea that exercise is the secret or is the answer, and that calories is what matters. They are counting calories and they're seeing it from the physical perspective, as in uh, calories in, calories out, that's the only thing that matters. Turns out that that is very far from how it really works. Body weight is primarily regulated by hormones. I've never heard that before. We've talked about this lots and uh, I thought, oh, hormones. Okay. Interesting. A medical system or the mainstream nutritional and all of that, the, the culture of this entire society pretends that we all are a human without variation, that everything that works for one person should work for another. And yet there are, I don't know what number, hundreds of different diets that seem to be working for a person. As in, which diet is right for me? Should I be going on a grapefruit diet, banana diet, all-fat diet? What and why? And how is it possible that one diet works for your neighbor and not for you? Great point, Martin. I was actually thinking of... Uh... A very, very simple example that basically proves what we're talking about. And what you're, what you're really saying is, is we are all individuals and uh, food affects us all differently. And the diet industry has said, no, no, everybody is the same. And so if you do this and this, you'll have that result. We know that's not true because everybody's done 
you know, 100 diets or 20 diets, and some were kind of worked and some really didn't work at all. But uh, the example I want to use is alcohol, and specifically beer. Uh, I happen to know a couple friends, particularly when I was younger, where we would go out to the bar and we would have two beer. And my friends were hyped, like they were all excited and they wanted to dance with the girls and everything else. And I was in the corner three quarters of the way to falling asleep. So the beer that got them hyped up and active turned the lights out on Scott. Always has, always will. And this is why I, you know, <laughs> this is not the only reason why, but one reason why I don't drink beer, because I go out with my friends, the last thing I want to do is fall asleep. And I can remember going to a party with a gal 10 years ago, and it was the first time I met all of her friends, right? It was early in our relationship. I went to this party. They were all drinking, so I drank with them. And in 15 minutes, I was like totally unfun because <laughs> I just sat there like a bump on the wall, not saying anything. And they were all, yep, 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 yep. And then they said, you know, you've got a very boy boring boyfriend, <laughs> And the fact was, was the alcohol, the beer, uh, I'm not going to complain the alcohol, but the beer uh, just put me to, puts me to sleep, makes me just relax. That's a fantastic point. And uh, indeed, that will be answered in a little while in the point that says, how do I know what type I am? What regulates the body weight? And we'll answer that. How do I know what type I am? Because it's the type that regulates it. And then what diet is right for me? And uh, how do I stop food cravings? How do I drop inches or reduce fat? How do I build muscles, which is, of course, is the opposite of that? And how do I build endurance? So I'd like to answer all of these going forward and uh, uh, start with the point that it is not the food uh, I should say, it is not the exercise, it is the food, and it is controlled by your glandular dominance. And every body, everybody has a body at, that has its preferences. And it's based on genetics, and you cannot fight it, and uh, you have to make best of it. And we're going to dive into it now. We're going to explain the glandular dominance. What does it mean? How does it work? And by the way, I stuck a picture of a lovely girl on this slide because I wanted to pose a puzzle. Which body type is she? Uh, I would say she's a good body type. Oh, she's a lovely body type. I don't even know what the body types are, Martin. So, Okay, well, let's, let's just start with this. Um, metabolic typing. The science of metabolic typing um, got its current shape in the late 80s. And it understands how your body will process foods. So that means what type of calories. They could be carbohydrates, they could be fats, and they could be proteins. Chemically, it's kind of interesting. Carbohydrate, that's carbon and hydrogen. Fats. If you add oxygen to carbon and hydrogen, you now have lipids. And if you add nitrogen to the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, now you are building proteins. And there are these internal conflicts that, uh, that develop because of, of the genetic adaptation of your ancestors. Food you just illustrated brilliantly with your uh, going to the party and going sleepy after a couple of beer, food will affect your mood and it will affect many things. Like as, as you're becoming more acidic, you're becoming more stimulated. And the first thing is you'll get excited. But if you do more of it, you'll get overexcited. You will lose your social graces. And if you get further excited, you will start picking a fight with people. And that's the acidic reaction. The alkalizing reaction is different. It first leads to procrastination, then to indecision, then to sleepiness. And if you keep going, it'll take you all the way to depression. So it sounds, Martin, that these are it, um, 
we don't want to be too alkaline and we don't want to be too acidic. We want to be we want to be a little in that neutral range, mild one way or the other is is probably okay. But if we're um, if we're too far either way, we're into road rage and we're ready to crash our car into somebody, or we're ready to just end life because we're just so depressed. Yes, that's correct. Well, and and there are advantages to some, right? Like a person who tends to be on the acidic side will rise early and will get a lot of stuff done, but will tend to be argumentative and not as much fun to get along. Whereas the person that tends to be on the alkaline side will probably not be very motivated to get out of bed, and but will be artistic and will be very amiable and just fun to be around. It sounds like your co-host. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, we know you. Scott I don't, I don't. is well. Scott is well loved, well received. And not only that, if you want to get me at seven o'clock in the morning, you know where I am one hundred percent of the time in bed. Right. And if you want to get me at six o'clock in the morning, you know, 100% of the time I'm up. We we have found with, I'm not going to dive into metabolic typing too deeply other than to tell you that uh, at the end of this webinar, we will give you links and how you can find it and you can work with uh, a metabolic typing coach. I'm a CMTA, Certified Metabolic Typing Advisor. I can help you gets to understand your biological individuality in such way that it will serve you instead of you serving it. So the point we want to make, Martin, is that your food definitely affects your mood. But not only that. And so we have defined broadly two types. One type needs to have high glycemic index food because they are poor converters of food into energy. So what type of food would that be, Martin? The healthy ones would be fruit. The less healthy ones would be other starches, starchy foods like rice Fruits, and... Potatoes. Yeah. Pasta. Yes. Uh, or, or just, you know, salads without fats and without proteins. So no olive oil on your salad is not a good idea. Okay, so people who require the... Uh, require high glycemic index food will benefit from eating that. And the high glycemic index things are starches. Low glycemic index foods are fats and proteins, and it varies. But anyway, there are people whose uh, food to energy conversion is super efficient, and we need to try and slow it down. And those people will do well on a diet that's um, rich in fats and proteins and poor in carbohydrates. And so there you have it. There are some people who are now thriving on the paleo diet, which is that sort of diet, ketogenic, low carbs, high fat. And I guess you could you could say this. People who have had their ancestors living in cold climate, eating high-fat food, especially the northern hunters, uh, they will require this sort of diet because they have adapted to it. On the other hand, people whose ancestors lived in tropical or very mild climates where abundant food was accessible all year round, they were more like more likely be the um, um, type 1s needing a high carb diet. And yet, there's one other thing, and this is what we're going to be talking about in this next few minutes the glandular dominance. For every person, there is a dominant glandular expression. And it's one of the three in men and one of four in women. And that is either it's your thyroid, your adrenal, or your pituitary. And each one of them looks different. Women will have one extra type, which is the ovarian or gonadal dominance. All men are testosterone driven. So all men are always testosterone dominant plus one. In the Western science, people have been using, been noticing that people look differently. They have this um, 
classification that they call ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. And uh, the ectomorph is uh, essentially the thyroid type, mesomorph essentially the adrenal type, and endomorph essentially the pituitary type. And uh, let's explain what that means. The thyroid dominants are primarily people who have had abundant access to iodine in their diets. So they were most, mostly the coastal tribes. And if we look at the, uh, the profiles, they will look primarily like uh, volleyball players, basketball players, people of the sort that um, are tall-ish. It's strange enough with women, um, all of the Victoria's Secret models that I have ever seen, every one of them has been a thyroid type. The men in the thyroid type, they tend to put weight on their belly. In fact, all of the thyroid types, when they start gaining weight, it will start coming on on the belly as if they were pregnant. Uh, on a man, typically they call it a beer gut. Thyroid type diet is a uh, is a combination of things that help to moderate the influence of the dominant thyroid gland. This, this person will typically crave sweets, especially after dinner, breads and desserts. It doesn't have to be sweet cake. It will be, I want to have some French baguette with butter or I want to have a potato or some sort of a starchy, carby snack. And yet, the opposite is what's going to keep them healthy. So for a person that's thyroid dominant, um, they will need to be eating fats and proteins to lose weight. They will be gaining weight on carbs. So if, for instance, you, as, as a thyroid type, if you put yourself on a banana diet, you will never get skinny. You'll just keep on gaining weight. These people are best suited to eating three meals a day, each about the same size, each with some protein. Things that don't work are stimulants. Thyroid types are the ones that do really badly on coffee, tea, chocolate, alcohol. It's just not working well. And both, both Scott and I are actually the thyroid types. So what I didn't get to say is this. Uh, there can be an inherent conflict between the, adren uh, between the uh, glandular dominance and the metabolic type. Like you could be a type that are supposed to be eating a lot of protein, but on the other hand, you will be the type that's going to be gaining weight on a lot of protein. So you will always have to figure out some balance, some way to balance these conflicts that may arise. And I was thinking when you're talking about the thyroid that you were describing me very well. It's important to understand that moderation is going to work. Like indulgence is going to be a downfall. Yeah, so when we're talking about these things, we're not saying never eat a potato or never eat a slice of chocolate or never, like don't go to the extremes. But if in the morning, the first thing you do is have a hot chocolate and then in, for lunch you have black forest cake and then for dinner you have chocolate ice cream you're, and you're doing that every day, then you are overdoing it and we're saying you need to cut that down to uh, a far far uh, far less amount right. and the important note would be this if you're the thyroid type and if you're trying to lose weight lose the beer belly or or the pregnant looking belly then the snack that you should be looking for is a proteiny snack such as a small salad with some fish or a or a hard-boiled egg that you pack around in your purse. So when the cravings come on you, you have something to dive into. Even just a handful of nuts would be a good idea. What's not, yeah. a, what's not a good idea is a snicker bar. 
Yeah, Martin, the first time you told me this was easily 10 years ago. And, and I took it to heart. And so I said, okay, like starches and everything, I need to cut those out. So I cut out pasta, I cut out bread. I cut out one other thing now and I can't remember what it was. And so I looked around for something to eat in place of these because obviously you can't just stop. You have to eat something. Uh, but I made sure that I was eating no bread. I was uh, eating no pasta. I was eating no potatoes. That was the other thing. And I didn't do anything else. Like I didn't start working out 10 times more in the gym or hiking 10 times further or anything else. I basically had the same lifestyle I had before. And I took my suit in because no longer did it fit around my waist. And it was very funny because the tailor, uh, the tailor's son came out to give me the suit. And the first thing he asked me was, what did you do? <laughs> because it was like six or eight inches just dropped off of my waist. Right? And of course, you're right. It all shows up. I have nice thin arms. I have nice thin legs. And I got this higher right where my belly is uh, and you know and that's where it goes and so that's where it dropped off and of course that's the belt needed to be a smaller belt and the pants needed to be taken in so it's amazing how different how big a difference this can make with just that small change in my diet so to illustrate right because it's the the thyroid dominance was mostly the coastal people so a lot of the uh, immigrants in North America came from uh, Ireland, England, Norway, Sweden, Northern Germany, France, Italy. All those countries are essentially coastal. All of them eat a lot of fish, fatty fish, a lot of vegetables. So they are genetically predetermined to be eating that diet, right? Either Mediterranean or English or whatever. And it's, it reflects itself in the need for high fat, high protein, low carb all the time. So for them, the paleo diet is the slimming diet. Now, let's, let's just talk about the other commonly uh, expressed type. Like a lot of people are the thyroid type, probably at least half the population. The next most popular is the adrenal. Now, the adrenal dominance is um, the old hunter types. These people have phenomenal uh, energy, sustained power. These people can usually run an elk for a day. They don't necessarily sprint, but when they, when they move, they move steady and they don't tire out easily. These people usually last physically extremely long amount of time like you can put them to dig a ditch and uh, you start them in sunrise and you can pick them up and sundown and they will still have energy to go the look is different the body shape is uh, you know in men it's more the linebacker rather than the quarterback so you would see the guys built more like a refrigerator and when they add weight, it's all over, up in the shoulders, up around the chest, all around the waist, in the hips. In women, uh, you know, to show you a couple of famous ones, one is Tina Turner, another one is Sean Johnson. They both, you can see at the shape of their legs, they have these abundant muscles, large, large volume. You can be in shape or you can, of course, pack it on. And once you pack it on, you become fat all over. And these people behave very differently. Their cravings are not cakes. Their cravings are fatty, salty, or meaty. Like this is the people that will, after dinner, have a piece of aged cheese or be looking for some kind of a sausage or something like that to um, to enjoy. The trouble is this. They gain weight on high fat, on fried foods and salty foods. And their weight loss foods are fruit, yogurt, and vegetables, salads. So this is the person that if they want to lose weight, they need to essentially try and go vegetarian for a while. 
they shouldn't stay vegetarian because that's not going to work in the long run. But if they want to lose weight quick, that's the way to do it. And because their uh, adrenal glands are so powerful, they have no problem with with tea or coffee or desserts, even alcohol. And interestingly, their eating patterns are different. They can they usually don't feel like having breakfast, light or zero breakfast, light lunch, and heavy dinner. And um, I guess the slimming slimming tea would be the uh, parsley, green parsley tea. I actually forgot to mention that there is a slimming tea for the thyroid types. It would be red raspberry leaf. For uh, for the adrenal type, it would be the green parsley tea. That it stimulates elimination. I guess you may you may know some friends of yours that that are like that, right? Like they're built phenomenally strong, and they. Uh, I mean, I I'm thinking of our mutual friend David, who's uh, running this forest retreat. You can just see him uh, with these powerful arms, powerful chest, just and he never stops. Never stops. The energy is so abundant; it's just daunting. So that's the adrenal type. And then there's, so basically right now I can see a problem because it sounds like what one eats, the other really shouldn't eat very much. And the way one eats, the other really shouldn't eat very much or eat that way. So you get into a problem where we have these families where one person cooks and they all eat together. And now one, one person is going to be like getting more and more depressed and the other is going to get more and more road rage or, or be healthy and wonder what's the problem with the partner or with the children. Yes, and this gets accentuated because opposites do attract. So, <laughs> But once, see, the thing is, is once you are aware of these things, then you can deal with it because if you're not aware of it and 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 you eat the food that the other person loves and it makes them you know healthy and ever happy and everything else and good mood and it makes you depressed or makes you mad like road rage uh, and you have no clue what's going on then you just have this emotion or you know going you know destroying the relationship but where if you understand this is the way I am I need to have fish and and salad and you need to have you know, salty carbohydrates and then you can you can figure ways around it so what about the third group? Oh yeah, the third group, the pituitary dominant. So the pituitary gland is the controlling gland. And um, it's, it's the gland that's uh, dominant in, in intellectual pursuit. Like if you're pituitary dominant, you will be probably a teacher or somebody very, it's, it's the knowledge workers. It's the people who are the, the brightest of the lot. Um, the the body shape tends to be the um, cabbage patch doll. The head is larger than you would expect for the body size, and the fat distribution is from the ankle to the chin. Like it's it's the nerdy type. Like I, I found a uh, a typical guy that's uh, it's that body type. Here goes uh, Seth Rogen. So you can see him when he was slim and then he started putting on weight and how it sort of reflected itself in, uh, you know, as, as, as a slim guy, he was an awesome runner, planes, planes, uh, herder, runner, that sort of thing. But as soon as he starts um, eating the wrong food, he just, it just turns into a um, cabbage patch doll. I found a picture of a gal that's that type uh so that's the sort of body type. Now, these people are um, typically greatly enjoying creamy things. Dairy, yogurt, ice cream. And uh, their, their weight gain comes from these creamy and sweet things. And their slimming foods, if you can believe it, are the organ meats like liver, kidney, heart, tongue. 
red meats, wow. the high purine proteins. Like for them to lose weight, they need to eat what would be considered the, the least healthy diet. And yet there it is. The, the uh, foods that don't do well for them would be the carbs, sugar, alcohol. And this body type, this glandular dominance, requires a large breakfast, medium lunch, and light dinner. In other words, the opposite of the previous group. Right. So the, the thyroid was even, three meals equal size. The adrenal is hardly any breakfast, but heavy dinner. And the pituitary is heavy breakfast and hardly any dinner. And, and I can just picture a pituitary type and an adrenal type getting together and she cooks this massive breakfast and just is so enjoying it. And he's like, honey, I, I can't eat all this. Indeed. Okay, so that's, that's the three common types that we have both men and women. This next one, the G, the gonad dominant, is available in females only. And that's when your uh, ovaries get overstimulated, they will accentuate the secondary um, sexual characteristics, especially uh, from the hips down. So these gals will typically be uh, at least one, if not two sizes bigger below the waist than above. And here's, here's one that's just really famous for, for that. Um, I think her name is Kardashian, and she's just oh, Kim Kardashian. Yeah, and she's very famous for showing off her accentuated feminine characteristics. Yeah, the other one, the famous one, that was Jennifer Lopez, and uh, and uh, Nicki Minaj was another picture that I put up. She is just famous for looking that way, and. Here's what, here's what typically causes it. The spicy foods are those that stimulate the, uh, the organ. They are stimulating to the, uh, um, to the ovaries. So anything that's savory and spicy, like Thai food, Mexican food, rich sauces, rich dips, salsas, that sort of thing, that all contributes to, uh, to stimulating the ovaries and causing this to... Uh, to keep going. So if you overdo it, you're going to have a bit of a hard time. You end up with this bottom that keeps going all the way to, I don't know, it, it looks like you're almost a car caricature of, of the female. Um, to slim down, light foods, fruits, salads, fish, poultry, yogurt, low fat, not that much red meat, Definitely not much spice. I mean, herbs are okay, just not the hot ones. Like, don't use cayenne and uh, hot spices. And uh, as far as the meal types, um, they can handle a bigger dinner and uh, light or medium size, both breakfast and lunch. So that's, that's the... Uh, survey of the understanding of the differences like you so martin before we go on i think this is a really good time to sort of have everybody take a second and now you understand why diets don't work because you're doing a diet so here's what happens with diets right some guy gets a bunch of he does it to himself and he goes oh man i just lost like 300 pounds and this is what i did and then a whole bunch of people say, well, I want to lose 300 pounds too, so what did you do? And then he tells them, and some of them lose weight, and some of them gain weight, and some of them get depressed, and some of them get road rage. And the people that lose the weight say, this guy is great, it works. Meanwhile, there's somebody, you know, four cities over, who does the opposite, and he loses 300 pounds, and he tells his friends, or his friends say, how did you do that? And he tells them, and then some of them try it and some of them lose weight and they're the ones that see what happens is is if you're eating food and you feel bad most of us if we're somewhat healthy in our head 
we'll stop eating it. Like we won't even think about it. It's like, uh, man, you know, I had three bowls of ice cream, like you said, and I just don't feel very good, so I don't do that anymore. So they self-select. So then you end up getting these large groups of people who are the only, they are that type, one of the three types and one of the, uh, one of the uh, stuff we talked about before the three types, I forgot, uh, but they're the type that this is the right diet. Yeah, man, like no breakfast, you'll feel great. Yeah, I know, man, I feel terrible if I don't have a big breakfast. Well, they don't hang out and do the same diet. And so you have these large groups that say this is the way and it is for a sliver of the community. It's not for the majority, but you're just doing it wrong because this works. Of course, we are saying that the whole tribe, the whole city is all homogeneous and it's not. And this is the, this to me is the crux of the problem. Like you might, you know, the, uh, the beach diet or the beach ball diet, or the, like you were saying, the banana diet, it might work perfectly for me if I knew I was that type, but it might not work at all for me and may be damaging for me if I'm not this particular type. And if you don't know, it's really a bad idea to, to try it to find out because six months from now you could be another 30 pounds heavier or what, you know, whatever the other problems are that you've got. And so we're not saying that these fad diets that you see in the bookstores are bad. We're saying they might be bad for you. And there's no way that you can tell reading the diet books whether it actually will work for you or not because they don't address it. They say everybody should eat bananas. End of story. And this came up a couple years ago because we, we were looking at um, a clinic in Chicago where he guaranteed he could cure your cancer. And we were thinking like, obviously that's not true because um, he would be curing everybody's cancer and he's not. Like the, the, it would have been you know, all around the world, everyone would be going to this person. But he had a very, very uh, loyal group of people where, yes, I went in, I had cancer, and I went on his diet, and I don't have cancer. And so it became, why is it that they're all good reviews and there are no bad reviews? And the answer, of course, was self-selection. If you went in and you were already feeling terrible because you've got cancer and whatever you were doing for that, when you go and you see him and he says, here's your diet, eat this and you eat it, and after two days, you feel terrible, you are not going back. <laughs> You're going to go somewhere else. But if you eat it, and two days later, you feel good, you go back, and then you continue, and you continue, and all of a sudden, in six months, you've reversed the alkalinity and the acidity in your body, and now cancer can't survive, and whatever happens, your, your body is strong again, and you lose weight, and you're just you think you're wonderful. And so we realize that one of the things that happens is people self-select. I go on this diet, the beach body diet, I feel great, I stay, and I tell all my friends to get on it. I go on it, and I feel terrible, and I add an extra five pounds, I tell everybody to get off it, or I have nothing to do with it, right? So there is this self-selection that occurs, and the result, of course, is when the people that went on the diet and didn't like it push back and say, that's a bad diet, everybody that's on it that likes it, they get their, we say, get their dander up. Like, no, it's, you know, you fight to protect what you think is, is really helpful. And the result is, is that you have this clash going on of my diet's better than your diet. When in fact, what you really have is you have two or more groups of people that this diet is right for their body type, their metabolic type, and that diet is not. But it's kind of like, have you ever seen the, the game where someone holds up a card and you can see one side of the card and the other person can see the other side of the card, but you can't see what's on the other side? And you, you end up arguing about what's on the card because <laughs> you were told it's the same on both sides. So one saying it's an ace and the other saying it's a jack. No, it's an ace, and you are you are never going to change your mind because you see the ace. The other person won't because they see the jack. 
And it's the same thing with the metabolic typing. Man, this thing works. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. You can eat all the ice cream you want. And the other guy is going, no, I, I have a spoonful of ice cream and I'm on the bed sound asleep for an hour, right? So that's the important part about what we want to share with you. This is why some diets work for some people and a lot of diets don't work for other people. It's because there are certain foods that help you and make you healthy and there are certain foods that make you more acidic or more sleepy uh, or will put on the weight, will affect your hormonal system, as Martin said. So, right. so here we are. We need to stop the... Uh nutritional lottery system stop, stop the insanity. insanity that was that a diet, was diet book wasn't it i don't know but it's <laughs> it's the it's the lottery right like if you are lucky enough to meet the nutritionist that matches your biological individuality you have a success if you're not lucky and you just meet the nutritionist that is not a match for you you have a disaster it's simple enough. So the, the answer here is, please understand that biological individuality is a real thing. It is something that must be considered and not just considered, but lived with and, and adjust, be adjusted to. Like you have to eat your ancestors diet or the dominant diet that has come through your genetics. Like it's quite interesting that the plains people that mostly are the adrenal types, like you can see it in a lot of uh, North American uh, Indian Aboriginal people, the Native Americans, they, many of them are the adrenal type. Many of the Aztecs and Peruvians and uh, Quechuas and whatnot, many of these people are the adrenal types. Uh, many of the Central European, sort of Central German folks are like that too. So Martin, this brings up an important question because we have a lot of intermarriage, intermingling going on. So what happens if you have a Plains person and they marry, a, say, an Italian, and now we're getting into this merging well, the, the, there's mixing and there will be uh, transitional types, but there will always be a dominance. Something will always get the upper hand and you can test it. You can always figure out which is which. Like if you think you're thyroid dominant, then try eating high protein, high fat diet. If you start gaining weight on it, try eliminating the fat and see what happens. Because if you're, if you're thyroid, you're going to be slimming on fat. If you're adrenal, you're going to be gaining on fat. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, close with just uh, sharing the principles. Just to get it right, to put your life together, to, uh, to win at this. Number one, if you know your metabolic type, it's like having the map to the city that you're going to be driving in. It's all of a sudden knowing that if you turn here, you are going to reach the destination. If you take the wrong turn, I, I, what I'm saying is without a map, it's really hard to know where you're going. The other things that are important, identify your toxic load because uh, toxic burden does complicate things. Identify your deficiencies. Most of us eating industrial food diets will find ourselves depleted of nutrients. It's no longer okay to try and live on industrial food. There just isn't enough nutritional value in it. So supplementation is required, but not the same supplement is correct for every person. Now, exercise and movement is important. I mean, I was saying that, no, it doesn't control your weight, and it doesn't, but it does control your health. You should be um, moving your lymph. The lymphatic system doesn't have a pump, which means that if you are too sedentary, you stagnate, you cause putrefaction, stagnation, unhealth. So at least walking or rebounding or vibrational machine, if 
you're doing the urban life or physical work. Like that, that's good. We are meant to be walking. The 10,000 steps a day um, target is not off. What's, what should I say? It, it's, it's a good idea. And then the last thing is clean up your environment, deal with your envi- and um, the toxic, invisible things in your life. EMF is not a good thing. So we, we have some gadgets that help you uh, clear the EMF. We have uh, the concept of grounding or walking barefoot on moist ground is actually a really, really good idea. And uh, deal with your emotional stress, whatever that may have been. If you have any health issues, deal deal with it from the high priority uh, concept. Uh, I learned this from uh, Stephen Covey, where uh, he uh, he said there are two axes you need to consider: urgent and important. There are some things that are important in life and there are some things that are urgent in life and oftentimes we focus on the urgent but they are not necessarily important necessarily important and it's the not urgent but important things that are uh, giving us the biggest payback so consider that planning pre uh, pre premeditative behavior knowing what's right for you and setting up your life in such a way that you do what's right as opposed to what's urgent. Emergency room tactics, it's too late. You would want to prevent these disasters. Now, the biological individuality, that's, that's all fine and good, but we need to also be rational. We need to remember that the industrial food experiment is not going well. The things that everybody needs to not eat include refined foods. That would be refined sugar, refined flour, refined salt, refined oil, uh, all the artificial sweeteners, uh, all the refined fats like refined plant oils or margarines or hydrogenated fats, coloring, stabilizers. That's, That's all very questionable. Um, chemicals, especially MSG, not very good. What's worth noting is that when you cook your food, you're actually uh, uh, denaturing the enzymes in it. So the more raw food you eat, the likely more success you will have with your diet. And if you do eat cooked food, remember to add to it digestive enzymes. It's really very helpful. And I would say that all industrial food is now toxic and deficient in nutrients. Just know it. Try and eat organic. Biodynamic and organic foods are worth it. They're worth the money. Yeah, and I want to jump in on that one because uh, I had a friend who's told told me for years that organic food was, you know, I understand I should be eating it, but I've got three kids and it's, uh, too expensive. And one day, I'm not sure why, uh, she she made the choice that for a month she would eat organic. And she was amazed because her children and her ate less food. Right? So because it was organic, because it was higher in nutrients than what they were used to, the body said, they didn't realize they were eating so much because the body said, oh, okay, you ate that stuff, but uh, there's no nutrition in here, eat more, as opposed to, you know, not being full. They thought it was, they stopped eating because they were full. Well, yes, because you can only put so much in your tummy, but uh, they eat more than they should have because the body was saying, yeah, like you stuck stuff in, you chewed it, you swallowed it, and it's in my tummy, but there's nothing here that I can use, so send me some more stuff. And when they started eating organic, they ate less because they were satisfied. Like, oh, I feel good now. I've eaten enough. And they were getting the nutrition. So the, I think it's a falsehood that organics, yes, a carrot that's organic is more expensive than a carrot that's not. 
but the carrot that's not, you'll have to eat two of them before your body says, okay, thank you, whereas you just eat one with the organic. I wish it were that simple. These days, a, a carrot that has been grown with herbicides and pesticides is only 10% of the nutrients of the carrot that was grown 100 years ago using organic techniques. So it's not eat two carrots, it would be 10 carrots. Yes. And that's, that's why at the end of the meal, you may feel unsatisfied. Your body says, feed me, even though you just ate a plate of something. Like at the end of a pizza, you are still unfinished because there's not enough nutrition in it. So, so the steps, the steps, find your metabolic type, understand your individual balance between fats, proteins, and carbs. So there are some people that need to avoid all grains, period. There are some people that need to be on low fat, vegetarian diet. There are some people that should be on the opposite, the hunter, high fat, high protein diet, and that's it. That is actually what is right for them. So do not, do not accept the government-sanctified, industry-sanctified suggestions. They are incomplete and misleading. They are they're based on averages. If I was an average person, one of my eyes would be blue and the other one would be brown. I would have one testicle and one ovary. I would have curly hair on half of my head. You, get you would only be able to grow a beard on one half of your face. Yes. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that average is not what you need. You need your biological individuality satisfied. And so in closing, the healthy way, um, it's, it's not a product that I can sell you. It's a process. It's a lifestyle that, that you can uh, get into. So if you want to work with us, um, Life Enthusiast supports you. We can offer you guidance with coach calls or with emails. We help you implement the, implement the changes gradually. This is not a um, you know, push button easy. It doesn't happen like that. And there's plenty of information to support you on the Life Enthusiast website. So you can either read at life-enthusiast.com or take a look at the products we sell. We do sell nutritional products. They have all been selected carefully for quality. They are rich in nutrients. And we can explain to you which ones are right for you, depending on which type you are. You can reach us on the telephone at 866-543-3388 or at 775-299-4661. Um, cool. And we'll put a link uh, in the description and or at the end of this uh, video for if, uh, where to go to take the metabolic typing test. It's $99 uh, and it'll give you everything you need to know to actually get started on this. But if you're unsure of any step uh, of the process, don't hesitate to call Martin and talk to Martin about it. So in, in the end, you can do a lot of it yourself by observation. Um, what we're showing you here is you can figure out by experimentation on yourself, or you can just take the shortcut, take the test, get the health coach and uh, get to the destination a lot quicker. And a lot easier. So thank you for joining us, everybody. We hope this has been uh, interesting and informative for you. And we really hope that you take action because uh, sitting and listening to us is only the first step in a process that uh, we all have to go through if we want to be healthy. We, we have to stop eating the garbage and drinking uh, sugar water you know <laughs> the you know, water is supposed to be clear and everything we drink is black there's a, there's a lesson in there somewhere and uh, and it can be fun you know when you start feeling a lot better 
uh, life becomes a lot more fun. And when you start losing 50 pounds that you somehow managed to pack on, life becomes a lot more fun and a lot healthier. And there's nothing worse than the uh, call in the middle of the night that somebody had a heart attack or somebody fell or somebody's in the hospital for some reason. And you know it's been coming a long time because they're not healthy. We can tell what healthy people look like. And we know that over half the population in the United States is clinically obese. So we need to start making changes and it all starts with us.